Hello there, Alina from Exomate Mastery here. And what we're going to talk about this week is actually a question that I received, I think it was yesterday, about missing walls. And I may have done a missing wall tutorial before, but this one I want to show how um, you can do it also on your grouping tree. So we did a, a coaching call last week on different ways of adding elevations. And you can actually add elevations in the grouping tree, which I also have a tutorial on. But I didn't really go into what the different types of missing walls are in that tool. So I'm going to kind of do two things today. We're going to sketch a missing wall that's floor to ceiling and doesn't have a header. So in other words, it's not a doorway. Uh, it's not a bar top. It's missing from floor to ceiling completely. But you've got material on either side. So just a wall opening, floor to ceiling, no header, uh, no fancy business. Just make it a missing wall. Okay, so we're going to do that. And then we're going to go over the... Um, option in the grouping tree where you can add elevations or you can actually add a room over there and then use the missing wall if you know where to find it uh, in that tool. So we're just going to kind of merge two topics together, but the whole overall topic will be missing walls today. So let's go take a look. Here I am in Sketch. I've got a nice little floor plan sketched here, but of course there isn't any doorways added yet. So I wanted to use this floor plan to show you what the difference in missing walls are. So you've got your D for door, right? We are used to using the doorway tool and setting doors uh, and walls here. But there is an option for a missing wall. So it's up here, just right next to doorway, to the right of it. We're gonna left click on missing wall. And then I can come in here and I can click on the wall itself. Okay, so I'm going to click on the living room wall uh, in between the living room and the kitchen and go to 3D by tapping 3 on my keyboard is how I'm getting here. You can spin this around. You can see I clicked once on the wall and the whole wall went missing from floor to ceiling. Unlike our doorway over here where you've got material coming down for a header. Okay, so that'll take away the whole wall. Now, I believe what this person was asking for, and I'm sorry I don't remember your name. I should have looked that up before I uh, started the video, but uh, you know who you are who asked this question. They would like a missing wall that um, has material on either end. So if I just click the missing wall, click on the wall, it takes away the whole wall. No material is left on either side. Now, I don't think she wanted material coming down from the ceiling. Should still be missing from floor to ceiling, but there is a uh, material wanted on both sides of the opening instead of the whole wall being taken out. So to undo that, I use Control Z on my keyboard. That'll undo that quickly. I'll go back to the missing wall, and this time instead of clicking once, which takes away the whole wall, you can left click, hold, and drag an opening here. And we'll try to center that. There we go. And when I look at that in 3D, you can see that the wall opening sort of acts like a doorway, a wide doorway. And it does have that material there, but at least we've accomplished a hole in the middle of the wall, if that makes sense. The material is still exists on either right and left side of that opening. So to do away with that header right here, I want that to go away. We want it floor to ceiling, a true opening uh, for floor to ceiling. We can go to the properties and click here, goes to ceiling, yes. And that will make it a true floor to ceiling opening like you would see um, just a partition, you know, with material on either side. So pretty straightforward. Again, you wanna click on your missing wall tool and you want to left click, hold and drag that opening, then go into the opening's properties. A little hand hovering over the piece of paper is the properties and change that goes to ceiling to yes. So those are the steps to get a missing wall with a floor to ceiling opening going from the living room to the kitchen. That's how I accomplish that. The other thing I want to show you is over in estimate items. We can add elevations. We can add uh, rooms here if we want to. We can double click on a component here. Excuse me, you have to go into a folder. So I'm going to use the dwelling folder. You have to go into a folder. You can't go into a room. It's already a room, right? So don't click on the room, uh, the little blue square. Click on the folder uh, icon here in the grouping tree. 
When you click on the folder, Dimensions comes up, and you'll see a little plus sign that's not very apparent. So not many people know how to do this, simply because it's it's hard to find that you even have the capability of doing it, and make it really hard to see how to um, add this in the grouping tree. But what we can do is click on that plus sign, go and choose your shape. So right now, a box would be a room. You've got a circle, you know, because that's really useful. Uh, but what I commonly use this for is elevation. When I don't need to sketch the elevation or if I just want to enter the dimensions, I can use this here to show the elevation. So let's say the length was 30, the height, and I love how they show you ground to eave here. That's what they're asking for. They'll give you a visual. So they'll say the height is 10. Uh, and then the gable height, if it was a gable end, you would put in the gable height. So we'll do six feet just for fun. But if it didn't have a gable, it's fine to leave it at zero. So don't worry about leaving that zero. That just means it's a long rectangular elevation. Then what I want to get to here is missing walls. So we can add windows or doors. Let's say we have some 404s opens into the exterior. We're going to, yeah, the, the opening goes out to the exterior. Let's say we had two of those. And this is what I want to get to. This is what's most confusing for most people is the uh, little icons right here because there isn't really a good explanation if you don't know what it means. Uh, they tell you there, but just to drive this home. So the first one looks like a window. That's easy. It looks like a window. That's your window icon. The second one is a bar top. So opens to ceiling only, meaning there's a pony wall coming halfway up the wall and then it's opening to the ceiling. So that's where you'd enter your length and height uh, correctly so that it would get the correct opening to the ceiling. The third one is opens to floor. So that's a doorway. Looks like a door. Pretty self-explanatory. Now you'll notice we don't have access to this last one. I believe it's because my height is so small, but this is your missing wall from floor to ceiling icon right here. I'm gonna left click okay and see if I can get it to allow for, well, there it is right now. It's allowing for the uh, floor to ceiling. And that is because the height is 10 feet. So watch this guys, it's really strange. If your elevation height here is set to 10, then when you go into your missing walls and you want it missing floor to ceiling, it has to be 10, right? Because it's looking to the outside and it's saying that the height of this elevation is the height here. So just be careful if you're using this in the elevation um, that you get all of your dimensions in correctly. Because if I go to missing walls and I put the length as maybe four foot that it has some weird opening, maybe a patio or something, an outdoor screened in porch might have just an opening um, like this with screen in it. Um, if I change that to eight foot, which you'd normally think of, it won't let me have access to the missing wall tool. It keys off of the elevation height out here. So just a side note, don't want to get too technical on you, but uh, you will have to pay attention to the elevation height if you're going to use the missing wall tool or want access to that icon there. So window, bar top, door, missing wall. Those are your four icons. Thought I'd just add in that extra bit of information on this video as many people have not seen this um, demonstrated. So hope that was helpful to you. I use it with for elevations, but you can go ahead and play around with it. See if you can find any other reasons to use any of these interesting shapes they've come up with for you. Like, you know, a trapezoid because we do that every day. So take a look at that, see if that's useful to you. If you liked this topic, please be sure to like the video below and also subscribe to this channel. We come out with new content on this channel every Tuesday. I recently purchased a drone. I'm super excited. So I hope to be posting maybe some drone footage of where I live here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, up and coming. So subscribe so you get notifications when I start to post some really fun stuff. Uh, not that Xactimate isn't fun, but uh, you know. Um, so my name is Alina Wilson with Xamate Mastery. If you want to know more about what we do here with our con uh, Xactimate training for contractors, go to www.xamatemastery.com. Hope you have a great week in your business and I'll see you next week.